Hello, today we're looking at human defense systems against pathogens. And we're going to look at two kinds of methods. One is what we call non-specific, and the other one is more specific. But we'll get to those in a moment. Ignore Freddy on the right-hand side there for a minute. We'll get to him as well. The human defense systems, what are we defending against? Well, we're defending against these microbes called pathogens. And pathogens are any microorganism that causes a disease. What do the pathogens do? Well, in terms of bacteria... What they do is they get inside the body, or if they get inside the body, they can reproduce in the body. And not only reproduce, but they can produce toxins as well. Toxins are basically poisons. And those toxins and the growth of the cells will damage body cells and they will damage body tissues. And that's what makes you ill. The second type of microorganism are the viruses. Now, these don't actually, they're not considered living when they're outside the body, but when they do get inside, they can reproduce and they will reproduce inside cells. They will use the cell's own chemicals to reproduce and they will therefore reproduce, grow and damage cells. So in both cases, we're getting damage to cells and tissues and that's what makes us ill when we get an infectious disease. So let's have a look at the defense systems. We're going to look at the non-specific ones first so we've got i've called it physical barriers but it's probably better to refer to them as uh, non-specific methods let's just put that in the corner there as well and we have four that we're going to look at we've got the nose stomach skin and what we call the trachea and bronchi and we'll look at more specifically what that is in a minute but it's to do with your windpipe and your lungs so let's have a look at each one of these in turn how does the nose de uh, defend against entry of pathogens? Well, on the inside of the nose, there are hairs. And not only are there hairs, but there is a substance called mucus that's produced. So the hairs can trap uh, pathogens, not only pathogens, but dust and stuff like that as well. And also combined with the mucus, it can trap things, stop things from getting in. And when you're sniffing and all that kind of stuff, that's just basically removing the microbes to the back of your throat where they can be swallowed and taken into the stomach. Now the stomach contains acid, specifically hydrochloric acid, which is uh, quite strong. It's got a pH of about 2, pH 2, and that will directly kill the microbes. So any microbes that get into your stomach either through food, well mainly through food or anything that's swallowed will be or can be destroyed by that acid. The skin is one single organ that covers the whole body, has various roles, but it's actually a physical barrier against pathogens. The uh, pathogens, bacteria, viruses can't actually get past the skin unless it's been damaged or uh, cut in some way. We then have the trachea and the bronchi and if we look on this diagram of the lungs, the trachea is the pipe that brings the air from outside into your lungs and the bronchi are those two branches that branch away from the trachea. You may have heard the trachea called the windpipe uh, somewhere else and that's exactly what it is. Either term is fine. So the windpipe how does that work with the bronchi? Well, they both have, on the inside lining, they both have these hair-like structures. And they're microscopic, so you can't really see them without a microscope, but they're like tiny little hairs, and they're called cilia. So that says on the inside of the lining. And combined with the cilia, there's also a layer of mucus. So with those hair-like structures and the mucus, that can trap dust and germs and microbes and stop them getting into the lungs and into the blood. So if we were to look at a magnify section there, it might look a little something like this. So there's the inside of the windpipe. And we have tiny microscopic hairs projecting inwards. And we have a layer of mucus. And those cilia, those in inward projections, they can push dust microbes back up and out of the body. Okay, so these are some physical barriers. There are others as well. For example, if you get something in your eye, microbes get into your eye, we can produce tears, which have enzymes, which will destroy them. But these are four main ones that we need to talk about. If microbes get past the, the uh, physical barriers, the non-specific methods, then we have the immune system, which will then kick in and take over. And we're going to look at three ways in which the immune system through white blood cells works. The first one is called phagocytosis. And this is literally white blood cells engulfing or ingesting microbes. So you saw there the white blood cell engulfed the microbe. It disappears because it gets digested and destroyed. And there it's gone. Okay, so this is phagocytosis. This is the first method. We are going to make some notes on all of these methods at the end. So don't worry too much about writing anything down if you don't want to at the moment. The next method 
is the production of these things called antibodies. And antibodies are substances made by white blood cells as well, and they are very specific. So here you can see a diagram. You might just be able to make out those antibodies there produced by that white blood cell, but let's just quickly add something there. And if we zoom in on this diagram, you can see the antibodies there being produced by the white blood cell. On the right hand side, we have our pathogen. And on the surface of the pathogen, you'll notice those structures in blue, and those are called antigens. Antigens are specific to particular bacteria. Only one kind of bacteria will have a specific kind of antigen. And if you look at these antibodies that are being produced, you might be able to think ahead a little bit and see what actually happens. So let's get rid of those labels for a minute and see what happens. The antibodies are released by the white blood cell and they can attach onto the antigens and that's because part of the antibody has a shape that fits the antigen. Be careful not to say the shapes are the same because they're not. The shape fits the antigen and we not only can attach to one microbe, we can attach to two and clump them together and they can then be destroyed by the immune system. Okay so here's our antibody from the previous slide but what happens if a different microbe comes in? You'll notice that the antibody, the shape on the end of the antibody no longer fits that particular antigen so that can't affect this microbe what the white blood cells have to do is produce the right antibody for this particular pathogen and this this is why sometimes it takes a while to fight off a disease because the body has to make the right antibodies once those have been made they can be released from the white blood cells and these antibodies and can they can then attach to the antigens and help to destroy the pathogen okay so that's how antibodies work we can look at the next one, which is to do with antitoxins. Just get rid of that for a minute. And look at the next one, which is antitoxins. Now, how do they work? Well, here we have our pathogen and our white blood cell, and the pathogen is producing these chemicals, and the white blood cell is producing chemicals to neutralize what the pathogen is making. So these are called antitoxins made by the white blood cell, and these are our toxins that are made by the pathogen and remember they can make you ill and so what happens is the antitoxin will neutralize the toxin and make the toxins harmless and that will prevent the pathogen from doing damage to the cells and tissues and prevent you from feeling ill okay so it's probably worth now actually making a note of what the different things do so we have the right terminology when we're describing what's going on so we've got the immune system and we talked about three ways in which white blood cells help to defend against disease. The first one was called phagocytosis and this is basically white blood cells engulfing or ingesting, make sure you use either one of those two key words, engulfing or ingesting the microbes, they then digest or break them down and they are then destroyed. The second method was the production of antibodies and again white blood cells produce these antibodies and these are very specific to specific kinds of microbes. They have a shape which fits the antigen and the microbes can then be destroyed. The last one, oh, oh, worth mentioning actually, specific antibodies fit specific antigens. The last one was antitoxins and Antitoxins neutralize toxins. And again, antitoxins are specific to particular toxins. So one antitoxin will fight one or neutralize one particular type of antitoxin. Okay, so there's your th summary of what's gone on and how the white blood cells defend against disease.